Postmaster, imagine, if you will, you're in a bookstore or a library or perhaps in a school courtyard. You hear music and then you hear this. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to Words and Notes, a presentation of the spoken word and music for your entertainment, for your education, and your enjoyment. Come, listen, and join us. That's my vision. That's my proposal to you, to use our talents as Toastmasters to bring the gift of communication to the general public. Here's my proposal that we gather several groups of talented people, a couple musicians and many public speakers who like to tell stories, who have an interesting way to put forward interesting information, who can entertain a crowd, who can stop people from their third or second cup of coffee and pay attention. And what this will do will put forward the concept of this liberal art that we call public speaking into the mind of the general public. And even more so for Toastmasters, people will be attracted to what we can do. Now here's how it will work. We'll put the word out that we're looking for speakers, poets, authors, storytellers. Most of them will be Toastmasters, but many will not be Toastmasters. And so because of that, We'll use our experience as Toastmasters to help refine and train those orators. Make sure they put on a show that communicates with the audience, delivers their message, but enhances the overall program. By showing those individuals our Toastmaster skills who will be contributing to our program, I think we're going to get at least one or two members out of that operation. But then when we move our presentation to a bookstore, a coffee shop, a library, a school by presenting that show and saying that this was brought to you by Toastmasters, we put together a show that will attract the audience to what we do. Let people know what we can do and it'll allow us to display our talents. There's another thing that this will do. Those of us who are Toastmasters who look towards using our skills in a professional nature as writers, authors, as presenters, facilitators, and trainers, this is another way to market our talents. And it's another way to refine our skills. Because when we talk to Toastmasters, it is a slightly different audience. When we talk to the general public, then we have to bring some other skills and learn how to read that audience and be sensitive to them in a different way. It can only make us better. But my proposal goes beyond that. The next step is to have a program that's so good, so compelling just to listen to, that we can produce a podcast on a regular basis. So a monthly or weekly podcast of words and notes brought before an audience in a bookstore, or a library, a coffee shop, is another way of reaching out. In fact, podcasts have the ability to reach out to a worldwide audience. Improving, of course, our profile on the world stage as Toastmasters. Now, all of this requires support. It requires you to think about those interesting stories that you've heard others tell and suggesting they get involved, and of course, those interesting, interesting stories that you've told and maybe you want to be involved. It can be anything. It can be a presentation about history. It can be talking about raising children. It can be talking about your job and telling the story of how, as public servants here in the High Women's Club, you serve the people in Oklahoma. But most importantly, whatever you say or whatever you do for this, it has to be interesting. It has to pull the audience in. It has to get them involved not only intellectually, but emotionally. So it will require perhaps just a little further push in your presentation, just a little bit more to make it that type of story. And oh, did I mention another thing? We want to keep the presentation short. <clears throat> to about five minutes, five, maybe seven minutes at the longest. So you've got that short Toastmaster time to present that story in an impactful way. There'll be a musical transition, 
and another presentation after that. Now, imagine, of course, we have first the first group, the first company of words and notes here in Oklahoma City. Further Vision sees other satellite organizations in Tulsa and perhaps in Lawton and other parts of the state following the same format, producing the same quality of presentation, creating the same excitement. Another benefit will be that when we have speech contests, those will be tickets that people don't want to miss. We have an area governor here. Imagine, Madam Area Governor, a speech contest where you have a line going outside the door, standing room only, and an audience that is excited to hear the speeches that are going to come before them. What will that do for club membership? What will that do for members in the club? And what will that do for those people participating in the contest? I say it will do great things. So the first thing I asked you is storytellers. Who tells stories in your club? Who in the club who tells stories would like to be involved? The second thing I ask is, after this meeting, I'd like you to let me know if you're interested in any way so I can get in contact with you. I already have a small group. Again, some of us are Toastmasters, some of us are not. I, my prediction is at the end, all of us will be Toastmasters. But a small group that we're getting ready to put on the show. Perhaps you could join us and meet with us as we're preparing, and we can start right now producing additional presenters for our program. Now, if there are any questions about how we would get involved or any of the logistics or any of the other visions, I'm really open to entertain those now, but my proposal for words and notes really makes sense. In fact, it makes the most sense if we get you involved. Are there any questions? which is why I say, look at people in your club who've told a great story, who you know are great storytellers, and recommend to them they might want to get involved. Rack them out. <laughs> so that then we can approach them. And I'm willing, and all of us within our group are willing to give additional coaching to help people, if you will, improve their game or modify it for our presentation. Great question. Anything else? Yes. I'm not real familiar with podcasts. Is that something that is filmed or is it just voice? Is it broadcast over the internet? Just explain a little bit about that. Exactly. <laughs> to answer your question more correctly, the majority of podcasts are just voice. They're just like radio. Now imagine you have your own radio station with one program and that's what a podcast is. It's broadcast over the internet. You advertise its, its web location and then people connect to that web location and then hear the podcast. They can download it through iTunes or other, other apparatus to hear later on. And that's what it is. Now, some bot podcasts actually have video associated with them as well. We're going to start with the voice and the sound first, and then we'll add video later on as technology and funds appear. Yes? How soon do you anticipate is rolling? We anticipate our, our first show in May. We have a group that we've met three times. We've done some recording just to get some feedback. And we're going to put together our first show probably the first or second weekend in May. Full Circle Books has tentatively agreed to allow us to put on, on a presentation there. So I'll get more information and send it out to Toastmasters to let people know where and when. And please, at least attend and let us know what you think. Yes? Mr. Ross. Could we leverage some of this with some past podcasts, maybe get some of those people involved, they've already done it, have the expertise, would that be an idea? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. If you or anyone you know has, has begun to produce podcasts, that sort of thing, please come our way, let me know. We have some people who, again, have some expertise with actually producing radio programs and, and other things. Just to let you know, of the people involved, we have 
when I think of it, I think we have four people who are published authors already involved in the program. You don't have to be a published author. You don't have to be a famous speaker. You don't have to have experience making podcasts. You just have to be able to tell a good story. And that's what's important. Anything else? Well, thank you very much. I hope I've generated some interest. I hope some people give it some thought. Think, gee, this would be a lot of fun, and you just want to do it. Trust me, it can be a heck of a lot of fun. There's a lot of potential here. And I really believe the sky's the limit, but it's not going to happen unless you do this. And all we have to do is tell a story. You know, the one we tell our kids, our grandkids, the ones we heard our grandparents tell us, just tell a story. Matter of